Welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Quite a number of years ago, I put together a neat little advertising device for my other half's business, and it worked very well. In fact, it worked surprisingly well. So I had to build a whole bunch of them and put them all over the place in different shops. And I'll get into those stories as we get through the video. So this really is a very simple circuit to put together. It just requires, you know, very minimal amount of parts and the cost output really isn't a whole lot and the amount of attention that it brings back is really quite surprising. So let's get into the video and I'll explain exactly how this little advertising device works. This advertising device is really nothing more than a flashing flyer or brochure holder. Now, what I've done here is, this originally was an entire page, and you can see I've laminated it, but there was some old advertising here, so I just cut it along the bottom half of the picture here, just put a white piece of paper here. So again, you can picture this whole thing as being laminated with whatever you wanted to advertise on the bottom here. Now, what really makes this thing work is, if you were to take, for example, if you were just to take two white LEDs and put them on a piece of paper and have your business cards there, it really doesn't work because people go, oh, it's just a flashing advertising gimmick. Well, when you put some flashing LEDs into a picture like this, and in this particular picture, they're acting as the xenon strobes in the bridge structure here, people are fascinated by that because it really brings this picture to life. And it works extremely well. In fact, so well, uh, my other half of myself, when we were testing these things, we brought one of these things to a local coffee shop that was relatively busy. And I would say that maybe every second or third person that walked into that coffee shop would walk up to this thing and look at it. That's how much attention it got. In fact, it wasn't five minutes and somebody was trying to steal the thing. He was trying to load it into his jacket. So it works extremely well, and that brought me to the conclusion that this would need to be very close to somebody that's working in, in the place that I put this thing, or it would have to be behind a counter or somebody would just, you know, try and steal these things. Now, with the lights on in here, you really don't get the idea of how bright this thing is, but these little LEDs, they look like camera flashes. They're so incredibly bright. You can see with the light on, it's flashing on my hand right now. You can see the reflection on my hand. So what I'll do is I'll turn down the bright lights in here and you can get an idea of really how bright this thing is. So you can see it's reflecting down here and I think it's even glaring on the lens of the camera. So this thing will get attention across an entire well-lit room and with the batteries on the back, let's turn the light back on here, with the batteries on the back side here, they're just two 2032 watch batteries and the thing will flash for a month and a half like this. So how I put this thing together, I, you don't need to build it the same way. You don't even need to laminate this. The reason that I did laminate this is because some of these things were intended to be outdoors. This one was intended to be indoors, so it was kind of a, a universal design. But what I did is I took some 0603 LEDs and I just soldered some magnet wire to the back side of the, the actual LEDs. And I drilled some holes in the picture here right where I thought the LEDs should be in the picture. And then I put the LEDs in those holes and then I put some tape over the back side just before I laminated them and I ran that bell wire down through some small pinholes in the back side of this lamination or this, um, this uh, paper that you would feed through a laminator. It's actually a plastic, uh, a plastic sleeve that you put the uh, piece of paper into. So when I laminate this thing, the whole thing runs through the laminator with the wires poking out and the LEDs in there and it laminates the whole thing all together and it, you know, you'd think that it would probably, you know, squish the LEDs or pull the wires off the back, but all, all four or five of them that I put together all, you know, lived through the laminator, no problems. And it actually, it did a really neat thing in the laminator just because of the little area around the LED, it kind of put a little bit of a pocket around the LED and you know when you look at a really bright light or uh, you know say a xenon strobe it kind of when it flashes it almost looks like it has a glare or haze around it almost like a little bit of an aura and that's what it acted as in this there's a little pocket around and it lights up that little pocket when it flashes so it just it really worked out quite well I was you know quite amazed at how how well this worked and the attention that it got was again really quite astounding so if you wanted to, you could just take a regular piece of paper and, you know, drill some small holes in it after you've, you know, put a neat little picture on there. 
and you can just poke some regular LEDs through and build this little circuit onto the back side. Now if you wanted to get a lot of life out of this you could use some double A's or something and uh, put a little battery pack on the bottom but you know I figured you know in a month and a half all the business cards are going to be done and I'll just go pop some you know dollar store batteries back in and another month and a half it'll be flashing again. So that's that was kind of the decision that I came to. The most expensive thing probably of this entire build was these little battery holders and that was it. So, you know, the circuit itself is extremely simple. And you don't need to use a bridge. You can get really quite inventive. If you say you wanted to have radio towers, you could put red LEDs at the tops of radio towers. Or say you could have a picture of a flying plane and, you know, the flashing LEDs could be on the plane. Or, you know, you could just do so many things. Really, the, you know, the, the options for putting something like this to, together are almost endless. And again, because the LEDs are in a picture like this, it makes it quite valid in public. People don't go, oh, it's just an attention grab. They go, oh, look, you know, a flashing picture. What's that all about? And they walk right up to it and then they read what's on it. And it's just, you know, basically just reels them in. So again, very effective. So what I'll do is we'll go over to the whiteboard and I'll show you exactly how this thing is put together. I'll show you the circuitry and, and give you some figures. This is the circuit on the back side of the advertising and as you can see it really is a minimalist kind of design and it has to be that way because most of this has to fit under that little gray silicone blob right so i'll start with this side of the schematic here with the 555 timer if you're going to build this circuit i strongly suggest you use the tlc 555 cp reason being between flashes it only draws 115 microamps versus a regular 555 timer like say an SA555 or equivalent would draw about 1.5 milliamps or higher and that's a huge difference especially when you're dealing with watch batteries like CR2032s. You got to remember that this thing is off longer than it's on right so we need to keep this current down to a minimum so that those batteries don't deplete too fast. If you're going to use double A's or triple A's, it wouldn't be so incredibly important. You could probably get away with a regular 555 timer. But again, if you use this part number with those double A's or triple A's, you'd get that much more life again, right? These two resistors and this capacitor set the flash rate of the LEDs. So the 820k ohm resistor up here between pin 7 and pin 4 and 8 is what sets the distance between the flashes. So right now it's about maybe 2.5, maybe 3 seconds between flashes. So if you were to take that 820k resistor up to 1 meg or higher, you might get 5 seconds or maybe 7 seconds between flashes. So you get a really quick flash and it would wait maybe 7 seconds and then flash again. If you wanted to make it faster, say maybe 1.5 seconds, you'd take this maybe down to 470k for an example. Again, you would have to experiment with this to, to see exactly how fast it would flash. This is just built to mimic what a strobe looks like on the top of a tower or on top of a structure, really. So I just played with the values and the length of the actual flash itself. The 10K resistor sets that actual duration of how long the LED is on for. So that sets the actual length of the flash. And right now with 10K, it works out to be about 36 milliseconds. So that seems to be just about right to mimic a strobe. If you wanted to take this down from 10K to say 4.7K, the flash would be even faster, but it appears a little bit dim to the eye that way. So I played, again, I played with these values quite a bit to come up with this. If you were to say, for example, take this 10K resistor and change it to, say, 33K, you would take that strobe effect and basically change it to more of an incandescent kind of flash on the top of a tower. It would come on and then go off. So, again, this just sets the, the actual length of how long the LED is on for, or the actual length of the particular flash. The 4.7 microfarad tantalum capacitor is also very important in this circuit with these values because this would all change if we change that capacitance value. So I'm using a tantalum capacitor. If you want, you can use a, a small surface mount ceramic capacitor or something like that in the circuit. This is built dead bug style on the back side of that advertising. So when I say dead bug style, it's like the IC is turned upside down and the legs are all sticking up like a dead bug. 
and the components are soldered between the legs on the back side of or on the upside down component They're basically soldered in the middle to save as much space as possible so if you're good with surface mount stuff and you say have a 402 parts or something like that you could get away with a uh, you know a small surface mount device and some very small resistors between the pins and a small ceramic cap and get away with a very small little oscillator circuit this here is just built with all through hole components and in a moment we'll take a look at a breadboard and I'll show you the components on a breadboard now the components that I have on the breadboard are a little bit bigger than what's in the actual project itself just because it's easier to see how everything is just placed so again, you know, tantalum or ceramic would be absolutely fine. I really wouldn't want to go with an electrolytic capacitor just because of size and, you know, leakage and all that kind of stuff, right? You can see I have a 56 ohm resistor here as a current limiting resistor with two LEDs. And the reason that I've set this up like this is, again, it's just a minimalist kind of design. The 56 ohm resistor I chose because... I really want the flash to remain bright throughout the entire life of these CR2032 batteries. If you're going to use double A's or triple A's, you could probably up this value quite a bit because, you know, there's quite a bit more current available with a, uh, you know, triple A's or double A batteries. But, you know, the CR2032s are very small batteries and this just happened to work out and maximize on the life. Again, about a month to a month and a half worth of flash life continual, you know, 24 hours a day with those little circuits being powered with the values that you see right here. Now, if you want, you can use this for other things as well. Uh, if you, say, have a, a car and you want a very bright alarm flasher, all you need to do is make sure that this tantalum or ceramic cap is rated for about 15 to 20 volts. All right, make sure that it's above the, the working voltage of the car. Normal cars when they're running is you know a little bit over 14 volts charging. So yeah, you probably wanna go with about a 20, 22 volt uh, capacitor for something like that if you're gonna be using a tantalum or ceramic just to be safe. And what you do is you would take this resistor here up it to say 330 ohms and use a, a high brightness red LED or something like that. The flash will still stay the same. All these values here will all stay the same. You know, the 820K, 10K, and 4.7 microfarad capacitors. And you can feed this with 12 volts and uh, you'll get a very, very bright flash out of it. Again, be sure that you change this resistor right here if you change this to 12 volts or you damage your LEDs or possibly this little 555 timer. So again, you know, the flash rate is very short, you know, it's 36 milliseconds is the duration of how long that LED is on. And uh, with a super bright red LED in your car, you know, with that particular flash rate, it would, you know, just probably illuminate most of the inside of your car when it's flashing, right? You can see what it's doing with just these little high brightness white LEDs. They look like little camera flashes on there. So what we're going to do is go over to the bench over here and we'll take a look at this on a breadboard. Here's an example of the components hiding under that gray silicone blob on the back side of the flyer. They're all through hole parts just like this. So you can see right here is a 555 timer, a 4.7 microfarad tantalum capacitor, the blue resistor is 10k ohms, the gray resistor is 820k ohms, and this is a 56 ohm resistor right here. And you can see the flash rate of the LEDs you know, pretty much mimics what you'd find at the top of a bridge or on a radio tower or something like that. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. Hope you enjoyed this small video. If you did, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos just like this in the near future, touching on all sorts of different aspects of electronics, vacuum tube stuff, and solid state. So until next time, take care. Bye for now.